thought of running a 5k for Thanksgiving has crossed your mind, this is your sign. Today we're going to talk about how to get ready for a Thanksgiving 5k in just nine weeks. Welcome to my channel. My name is Letty. I am the host of the weekly marathon running podcast and I have this YouTube channel where we talk about marathon news, tips, gear reviews, etc. And along those lines today we're going to talk about a Thanksgiving 5k and how you can get ready for one. But first let's start by talking about why you should consider running a Thanksgiving 5k. Perhaps you've never done a 5k or perhaps it's been a really long time since you've done a 5k. A 5k is a great way of getting back into running because you're doing a training plan but it's not as regimented as a marathon plan. It's less overwhelming and less time consuming. Another reason to consider a Thanksgiving 5k is you've just finished a fall marathon, you're hooked on marathons, you want to do another one next year but you want to be faster. A great thing to do is work on your speed now on shorter distances and carry that speed over to the half marathon distance and eventually the marathon. So this would be a great thing to do in between seasons before you pick up your next marathon cycle. And I'm just going to mention one more reason to run a Thanksgiving 5k and that is to start a new family tradition. Maybe you have children and a husband and this could be a thing that you guys do on Thanksgiving morning. You start your day out right, you start your day out healthily because you know towards the afternoon you're just going to be eating a lot of food and so this way you are putting yourself in a place where you are healthy and happy and you're running that 5k. I don't know. I always try to get my family to do it but anyway. One more thing to do prior to hopping into step one is to actually find yourself a race, which I almost forgot to mention because obviously we know when Thanksgiving is, we know the date, but what you want to do is find yourself a race that's local or wherever you're going to be at Thanksgiving and sign up for it and really get excited about it. The best way of finding yourself a Thanksgiving race is to go to Google, put in 5k, the name of your city and put Thanksgiving. A lot of time that will just trigger the search to bring what races, what 5Ks there are for Thanksgiving because a lot of them have Thanksgiving in the title. Another way of finding a race that is a local 5K is go to the Running USA website, which is runningintheusa.com. I'm going to try to remember to link that as well. This will hopefully bring you to the websites of your races where you can look at previous pictures, you can look at the course and see if that is something that you want to sign up for and then get excited about signing up for this because this is a goal that you set yourself out to do. Do it with a friend, do it with a family because that's just going to be more fun. All right, so now that you all have been convinced to run a 5k on Thanksgiving day, let's talk about the steps that you need to take in order to be able to complete this 5k. Step number one, think about your goal. Everybody's goal is different, right? If you are a newer runner or if you're running this 5k with your family and you just want to have a lot of fun doing it, then that is your goal. Your goal is to finish this Thanksgiving 5k and make it to the starting line safely. Maybe if you're someone like me who runs a lot of marathons but never has focused on the 5k distance, maybe this would be a good opportunity to focus on being able to complete a 5k at a faster speed and then later on bring that over and carry that on to the marathon distance. That's another option. There are no two runners that are identical when it comes to goals and motivation and accordingly training will vary for anyone wanting to achieve that 5k. Even if you're on the same training plan, maybe your paces are going to be different. So keep that in mind as you go on to step number two, which is going to be selecting a training plan that works for you. So like I said, training plans will vary for everyone depending on what they have selected as their goal. However, there are similarities between all training plans. The good news is that most training plans that really get you to the starting line prepared are about nine to 10 weeks long. So you are right in time to start training for that 5k. When you check out most good 5k training plans, you'll see that there is a base phase, a peak phase and a taper phase. So there are those three phases. Let's talk about phase number one, the base phase. That is your foundation. If you are a new runner, this is where you get used to running and get comfortable and it's more of a easier phase. If you're a seasoned runner, then obviously at this point you are trying to get back into the fitness that you've previously had before hitting the harder stuff. So you're basically building endurance, your aerobic base and getting comfortable again. 
Now moving on to phase number two, this is the peak phase and that is where things get harder or more fun. You're just gonna challenge your body a little bit more. So what that means, instead of just gentle running and building that aerobic base, you are doing speed work, meaning you are pushing yourself harder for a certain time period during your runs after having done a proper warm up, of course, that will make you move faster and more efficiently and build your speed. That is also where your peak mileage happens and everything just feels a lot more intense. But then you go to phase number three, which is the taper phase. That is when everything gets taken down a notch. When it comes to mileage, you're running a little bit less. You're letting your body recover and digest everything that it just went through. So that way, at the time Thanksgiving rolls around, you'll be able to do your peak performance. So those are the three phases of any 5K plan. And Again, if you're a beginner, your peak phase will not be as hard as it will be if you're a seasoned runner. Everything is relative and everything is manageable as long as you've picked the right training plan. And let's talk about that. There are so many different plans online. There are so many coaches online. So it's really, really hard what to pick. A few very popular plans that are on the website available for downloading are Hal Higdon, Jeff Galloway. One that we prefer is the 80-20 plan by Matt Fitzgerald. So who is Matt Fitzgerald? Let's hop into that a little bit. Matt Fitzgerald is a name that is very well known in the running world. He is an author of a best-selling book, a couple best-selling books actually. He is a runner, he is a coach, he is a nutritionist, and just all around a person that is very scientifically approaching running and he provides runners with a ton of information including the 80 20 rule is um, something that he has also adapted into his coaching which means that you're running 80 percent of your running easy and 20 percent of your runs at high intensity and that mix scientifically proven and running is what propels you forward rather than running all of your runs fast. So I definitely have seen results when I did or do my runs 80-20. It allows me to stay injury free, run at a higher mileage, build my aerobic endurance base, and then that speed, that 20% of speed definitely has gotten me faster. So that is definitely a training plan that I prefer. So when you go to the 8020 website, you can see on there that there are coaching plans available for sale based on your abilities. So all you have to do is pick the distance that you are training for and then select your ability of what you want to do. If you're a novice or if you're kind of advanced or if you want to do an elite plan when it comes to this 5K, that is up to you to select. And then you can sign up online to get this plan into an app, which then also goes on your watch. Alternatively, if you do not want to do that, there is his book, the 80-20 book for sale, which includes the training plans. Obviously not as easy as receiving them to your watch directly, but definitely some of the same stuff on there. And then you can hop into the training. Like I said, Thanksgiving is nine weeks away and nine weeks are plenty of time to well prepare yourself mentally and your body physically to run that 5K at whatever goal you want to do. So then that you are ready to go, make sure that you remember one thing, that it is the journey that is most important. Me, myself, I do a lot of marathons and I complete a lot of marathon training cycles. Usually I'm a huge believer of you get out what you put in. So if I have kind of an off season, a lot of stuff going on with home and the kids, then I know my marathon's not gonna be as fast. But there are still some times where I am in a really good shape and I've done all the work, but the marathon doesn't turn out the way that I'd wanted to. And sometimes that's because of jet lag. Sometimes that's because of the weather. Nevertheless, for that reason, it's most important to remember that the journey is what counts everything leading up to the marathon. I think about how much fun I've had running with other people. I think about the hills I conquered when I find them here in Florida and things like that. And you just really have to make a point and really try to enjoy these um, training runs because then that whole experience is just gonna be a lot more pleasant. So again, guys, Thanksgiving is just about nine weeks away. Again, that is the perfect amount of time that you need to have a really good training cycle for a 5K in no matter what ability you are. So sign up for that 5K. Let me know in the comments your reason why you're running a 5K or which 5K you are signing up for. If I have missed some tips, please also put those down in the comments for other people to read. If you feel like this video has brought you any kind of value, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. 
for future videos. And thank you so much. And until next time, have a great week of running. Thank you.